Murphy is in Steinberg. You know what the f it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut coat. No political corrections. Always sleep. Being awoke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this. Before you were sucking on your mama's. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot, racism, sexism. Much love to my loyal bag holders, rollers, loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. This O Steve comes to us from me. I haven't done one in a minute. Had to pull the jersey out the rafters. Uh, and it, I, 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 if you listened last week, I, when I did it, I said, holy. I felt like I kind of uh, blew the surprise but because I did it in the moment and hadn't pre-planned it. But I thought, let me think about it. And so here it is. This is the uh, lost edited scene from The Clumps. God damn, baby, this food good. Play this. I don't need you to cuss at the table. I don't need you to cuss at the table either, Cletus. I don't like that kind of language. Don't tell me what you don't like. Got no teeth. That girl crazy in a dog in a hubcap factory. <laughs> Oh my God, Cletus, all that flatulence. I don't like it. I remember last time somebody farted in my mouth. It was 1967. I was eating ass from Lou Rawls. Lou Rawls sang his song, and he motherfucker farted in my face. Oh, it tasted kind of good. Mama, I don't need you to talk like that in front of company. And besides, we got my favorite white boy here, the producer of the Spears and Steinberg podcast. How you like them beans, baby? Ooh! Oh, Steve, oh, Steve, oh, Steve. <laughs> I take it you liked it. You laughed. Yeah, that was good. That was funny. Yeah. That was funny. And we, I knew it from last week because we, we, we right. hit it a little bit. But uh, all the characters and everything you put in there, that is, that is great. I'm a goddamn genius. It's great. All right. Let me, uh, I got a little bit of a, and you know, let me say something. I'm going to read an email from a guy named Joe King. And when I first originally read it, I was super heated. And I had hit this motherfucker back because um, he, he, he felt the need to uh, hit me with some that he told me not to read on the podcast. But then as I read it halfway into it, it really pissed me off. So I wrote him an email letting him know I was going to bring the thunder a la uh, Kurt Russell from Tombstone. You tell him hell's coming. I'm coming. And hell's coming with me. But since then, I've gotten a chance to calm down a little bit. Um, so I'm not as venomous. Uh, I'm not going to be as venomous as I was going to be. Because um, I got a chance to calm down a little bit. But it still kind of ticked me off. Uh, so even as I read it, it may respark the flames of my emotions. Uh, and I might get a little, you know... I might get a little Joe Jackson on this, but I'm not going to go full beating. <laughs> um, Are you going to read the whole thing? I, that's another thing. I may not need to because the bulk of it is some religious shit. Um, but here's, here's what I said to him in my quick rebuttal via email. Uh, I said, I tried to do everything in my power. Uh, I tried to do everything in my power to read this entire email so that I could prepare myself to read it on the podcast with a pre-planned response. But once I got down to the part about trial four and Sean Ellis, I decided it's best. Uh, not only do I read this on the podcast against your wishes, but I read it first because you passionately just got my card. Cause I can't wait to put it in you and rip you a new asshole. <laughs> People like Jesus. you kill me because Jesus. you state your opinion. Like it's facts, which reeks of dictatorship. Going to stop there before I say too much like you say and make it too long. But who the f*** do you think you are? Are you f***ing serious? Um, and then he sent me a reply asking me not to rain holy hell on him. Um, but without further ado, uh, here we go. Can you please? I, I need you to be okay, with me. I'm listening. I'm listening. Um, this is from Joe King Podcast, episode 553. Uh, he goes, <clears throat> you don't got to read this on a podcast, but this is more of a personal message to your ignorant, grizzly voice, fan hating ass. Uh, first of all, I got to say, I love you, my brother, as I do Godfrey and D.L. Hewley. I sincerely do. But damn it, 
uh, you three can be some of the most ignorant, pompous the world has ever laid eyes upon. Holy, what are you looking for? I know, no, I was just looking at something I had. I, I know, but I, I, this I, podcast, I, I'm, I'm listening. Okay, because when you're not focused, I think you might miss beats where I need you to jump I'm, I'm, in. I'm in. All right. Um, there are a few topics I want to address, but I only do one as I don't want this message to extend longer than Elvis Hall of Fame Library, to which it does, by the way. Uh, how Godfrey express, expressed on Club Shay Shay. But before I do, let me quickly get some off my chest. You comedians are soft as mushy coochie with knickers twisted within its crevice. Y'all claim nothing is off the table when it comes to comedy, such as immorality, mocking death, for example, trying to justify it with bullish explanations such as, oh, comedy is about taking pain and cooking it into jokes to bring joy from it. Rubbish. Rarely it's performed in a sincerely funny way. The audience mindlessly laughs at anything, even when a joke hasn't even landed yet. So audience laughter has little value. To me, shock value comedy is a cheap way of gaining clickbait reactions instead of genuine jokes that causes honest laughter. Take Jim Carrey's unnatural act, for example, where he joked about how humble and loving Jesus was towards his enemies when being tortured to death in comparison to how Jim Carrey, as humans in general, would be yelling while crying on the cross at his enemies that his father will come to destroy them. That was sincerely funny while saluting Jesus. Now compare that with Eddie Griffin, who I also freaking love to death, but one of his stand-ups, which I saw this, by the way. I did too. Was talking about how Christians are too superstitious and stiff in terms of not relaxing to have fun. I agree with him to an extent, but then he went on to make a series of jokes to emphasize how we should not be so serious and be able to laugh at ourselves. He went on Christians first by mocking Jesus' death, saying something about the sound of whistling wind moving through Jesus' impaled hands. That bit? Yeah. Are you, uh, you going to read this whole thing, or are we going to comment on any of this before we get to it? I just no, I'm, I'm going to stop uh, during the comedy part, right? The show, I'm going to stop soon. <clears throat> the camera moved to the audience, and they were all holding their hands to their mouths as if to say, oh, shock value. Not funny, disrespectful, and it disappointed me as Eddie Griffin is funny as hell. He shouldn't need to rely on such a lazy gimmick. But I said all that to say when people say one of the two little, to say one of or two little bumbaclot stupidness to you comedians. You get so uptight talking about how disrespectful the harmless jokes are, knock the fuck off and grow a pair of nuts. All right, let me stop for a second. Yeah, please, because this is making me mad. Yeah, and this is why I got mad. Um, dude, I've said this many times. It pisses me off when people like you state your opinion. 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 And in case you didn't hear it, let me say one more time. Your opinion, like your word is law. It's not fact. Stop acting like your opinion is a fact. There is a reason why the word subjective is associated within an art form. Because what may be trash to you might be treasure to somebody else. And just because you feel that way does not mean that the masses do. Get off your narcissistic dictatorship horse. Because only a narcissist or a dictator would say, if it ain't funny to me, the masses can't laugh. And if you do, you're punished by death. Get the fuck out of here. It's comedy. It's subjective. I love that Eddie Griffin joke. And when you go, it's disrespectful. Like I said, one of my most popular jokes, successful jokes, Martin Luther King, I make fun of his assassination. And this happened in 1968. It's 2024. I, that's over, what, 50 years? Yeah. And to this day, when I do it, you see in the, in the crowd, shock, awe, oh. But here's the brilliance. And I'm patting myself on the back as I should. I follow it up with, what, too soon? Big laugh. That is the creativity and the artistry and the genius of what we do. To take something that is either deemed taboo, dangerous, edgy, untouchable, and make it funny. Everybody does not have the power to do that. That's why three of the biggest trigger, trigger topics in comedy, politics, race, religion. A lot of comics won't touch it. Fluffy, 
himself said, I don't touch those three because it turns people off. And if you don't know what you're doing, it gets people riled up. I know what I'm doing. That's why I'm a goddamn genius. Okay. I want to tag on a little bit to what you just said. Uh, it said, because you just said, because if you don't know what you're doing, it can get people riled up. And this is where I disagree with you a little bit. If you do know what you're doing, you're right. it will still yes. get people riled yes. up. People yes. especially like you. And the reason I'm saying like you is because you came in here and you said why did that joke you gave a... I forgot even how you dismissed that joke. That joke is genius and it's funny. The Eddie Griffith joke. Yes. yes. The whole joke is funny. Right. And you took it in a certain way and you said people had their hands over... They had their hands over their mouth because no one's ever said it to them before where they had to think about it. Making people think is an actual... Abs, to me, is an absolutely important part about comedy. And to me. And to Sweet. most comedians. Because we, we, the only thing we really offer is for us to give you a different perspective, for us to show it to you in a different way so that you can uh, take this in a different way. But what are your credentials, sir? Why do you think that you get to judge that joke? Because there's one thing. If another comedian and I were talking about that joke and he told me why he didn't think it was funny, I probably would want to understand his point of view. because it would. And be you might not agree with and it. Yeah, but it would be interesting to me because he's coming from a place of comedy. Sir, where are you coming from? I don't know you. I don't know your credentials, but you decided you're going to tell me about comedy. And you've never done it. You don't think it. You aren't it. You can't smell it. Taste it. Touch it. This is what we do every day. Every day. And you just told me, and, and you said, I find him funny. So he said one thing that you didn't find funny because it hits you in a different way. Because you couldn't get, he tried to give you the tools so that you could see it in a different way and you couldn't go there. So you deemed it not funny. And just so you know, as we continue to read this, and again, I'm not sure I'm going to read the whole thing because it's the base of this from him not liking that joke and finding it disrespectful to the huge second part of this email is all religion based. So this obviously is important to you from where you stand in terms of religion and your ideology. Um. But just to let you know, and this is the other thing that I, I don't like about it. And you're right. I, I said, you, what credentials do you have to talk to me about comedy? That's one. That's my opinion on this. But you do have a right to your own opinion. Everyone has a right to their own opinion. But if everyone liked every joke and thought that the person was a genius, they don't make a room big enough for a comic to come in and do comedy. We ain't supposed to be able to have everyone like us. We're supposed to have people that enjoy us, enjoy us. And because you don't enjoy us, that was th that particular joke that was made for you. Not for you to come into the room, to get the f out of the room. Mm. And here's another thing. If everybody didn't pursue their passion or their thoughts or their feelings based on what you don't like or what you deem untouchable, nobody, no, nobody would, 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 would live out their dreams. Most people would be who they are, which is robots in a society that says stay in this box, be a nine to five worker, grind every day, don't ever become rich because you're not in a position to do what you need to do to become rich and die. That's why you have passion and dreams and thoughts and feelings so that we can not be uh, under the thumb of people like you and go, well, this person deems I shouldn't think it, I shouldn't say it, I shouldn't follow it. So because you think that you want me to be in this box, get the f out of here. I know exactly what I wanted to call this episode. Who the f do you think you are? You got me sounding like Ben Affleck. Who the f do you think you are? You think you're the only guy in Charlestown with a gun? Who the f do you think you are? Now, let me get to the second part. Um, now that I've got that off my damn chest, it's time to get to the meat and potatoes. I'm going to need some utensils for this. Aries, you exude intelligence, intellect emanates from you. But my hero, sometimes you come across as a one dumb blonde bimbo ass. I'm trying to figure out if you're doing it intentionally for the sake of conversation for TV or if your ignorance just generates rage that blinds your rationale. I want to address what you discussed in relation to the dude who got locked up for 22 years and you were trying to fathom how a God could allow such injustice to occur beneath his watch. Everyone always say uh, uh, everyone always seemed to have this ass backwards. I'll try to enunciate this as speculatorily, spectacularly, sorry, as possible. If there is a God that exists, his enemy, the devil, also exists. Aries, you know that rewind sound effect thing you do? Yeah, do that ten times and read that 
sentence each time. Okay, let me stop right there. Again, who the f*** do you think you are? Listen, if you believe in God, and certainly that is your right. This is America, Jack. This is a free country. Unless you live in a, in a dictatorship or a North Korea or a South Korea, whichever Kim Jong-il is from, or maybe a Russia or certain parts of Africa in the Middle East where you almost can get killed for your beliefs, everywhere else you're allowed to believe what you believe. And for the people that believe in God, okay, that makes sense to them. You can't have good without evil. You can't have God without the devil. But for the people who don't believe in God, who have every bit as much of a right to not as you say to the people who do, if they don't believe in God, then guess who they don't also believe in? Do you see where I'm going with this? If I don't believe in God, and I'm not saying me personally, I don't, because that's my own internal struggle. But if someone goes, I don't believe in God, that means they also don't believe there's a devil. You can't have one without the other. If they don't believe in the good, they don't believe in the evil. The two go together. But again, this narcissistic dictator mentality that you have, that we have to believe as you, we have to feel as you, we have to see as you, we have to move as you, get the out of here. I said I was going to be calm, but this is what pisses me off, you sucker. Can you rewind that and say it again? I said I was going to be calm. <laughs> That's hilarious. You <laughs> cocksucker. Who the f*** do you think you are? Like, you, everybody's supposed to believe as you do? That's not how this works. This is a free country. People are allowed to believe in what you don't. Uh, you think anything on that? Well, I, 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 I'm I, going to give him a little... I'm not going to be as hard on him as this because he is... Because you said, when you we, we were talking about it, it was, if there's a God, why would he do this? And then to to where you guys are kind of in the gray area. I think he addresses you at some point on yeah, this, doesn't yeah, he? Well, I don't know. Uh, if if it's if it if there is a God, then is what he's saying. Then there is. The and devil. I love how you talk to me like you're my parent. Yeah, rewind that ten times that until you get it. I could say the same thing about you because listen, man. Why can't what I believe be respected? the same way in terms of what you believe. And this is what I always say about these uh, religious fanaticals. You guys are the biggest hypocrites because I believe that somewhere in the Bible, it has to say, hey man, even if your fellow brethren don't believe what you believe, embrace him, love him. Don't belittle him. Don't talk down to him. Don't cast a shadow. Don't throw stones at him. Show him the way. Show him the way. Put them under your arm. Put them under the wing. It's like the saying goes, you attract more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. If you want a bunch of people to, li to, to, to hear you out and to maybe follow you and transform their opinions, then talk respectfully. You, you, you'll get me more to listen to you if you talk to me with respect and not call me a bimbo blonde ass not slap me and then compliment me at the same time. I'm your hero, but this is how you talk to your heroes? This is how you engage with someone who you say you love? You, you blonde bimbo, you stupid idiot. Rewind that 10 times till you get it. You, who the f do you think you are? Hey, can you say that catch more flies than honey thing again? Catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. But there's this comedian, Matt Fulcheron, the full uh -huh. charge, and he yeah. says... Yeah, that's true. But if you fly, you can catch more honeys. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to put that in there along the file with uh, Mike at Free Mail. Yeah. A, a, a Rolodex of great quotes. Yeah. That's dope. But if you fly, you can catch more honey. Yeah. Um, Shout out to the full charge. If there be light, there be darkness. Our mis mis machin or our Mexican. Talking about you now. Oh, okay. Our Mexican amigo Andy should be familiar with the Spanish term claro y oscuro. I don't know what that means. Do you? Light and dark? Is that what? I don't know what that means. I think it's light and dark. Look, light, homie, it's light and dark. I'm sure you know Satan was jealous of God and so trickled humanity away from God via Adam and Eve. So that Satan became the God of corruptions. 2 Corinthians 4 4. 1 John 5, 19. Humanity voted for Satan to be our ruler, and Satan placed humans, earthly kings, in a high position so that he could rule the world through them. The spirit of independence that Satan incited, uh, enticed Eve with humanity also expresses 
through the religion of atheism. So God is like, cool, y'all will dominate yourselves to ruin and y'all will progress from bad to worse. While that happens, none come to me about you want help because non guan help non o unu. And as expected, uh, when feces hit the fan, earthlings weep, boo hoo, why isn't God helping? Boo hoo. You chose Satan to be your God. Ask him for help. Furthermore, you thought you didn't need a God, so fix your problem, your damn self. Let me stop again. Here's what I have a problem with. So basically you're saying, because I don't believe in God, I choose Satan and evil as my God. So when the shit hits the fan and I need help, then don't come crying to God. Let me ask you something, genius. When those planes slammed into the uh, Twin Towers on 9-11, those people chose Satan? Because I'm sure they were begging for God. I'm sure they were asking for God's help when it didn't come. So why did that happen? Because they chose Satan? When kids get kidnapped, raped, and tortured, why is that happening? As they're begging for God to help save them. That doesn't, that help that doesn't come. Because they chose Satan? When those people were trapped in those buildings and jumped 80 stories to their demise because it was either that or be burned alive in 2,000 degree heat and smoke inhalation when they were begging for God and rescue that didn't show up why did that happen to them because they chose Satan are you serious one of the most creepiest eerie things I heard well, let me not use creepy that's the wrong word but eeriest thing as I heard uh, was recorded footage of a guy trapped in the Twin Towers he calls 9-11 He's begging for help. Please, I can't breathe. It's hot. Just as while he's on the phone, the building starts crumbling. He, he feels the shakes. He feels the, the ground underneath him giving way. And he screams, oh, God. Oh, God. No, God. What happened? He chose Satan. It happens. That's life. It's f***ed up. It's unfair, and I think there are m masses of people out there who, for them, it's very hard to accept that, you know what, it just happens. So they have to believe in something. Now, I'm not here to say they're right or wrong, because that's what you're doing. But what I'm saying is, hey, man, you, 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 you see what the world around you, and you try to make sense of it. You try to make sense of something that makes no sense. And in order for that to make sense to you, Maybe that's what you need. You need to believe. But what I'm doing, and this is why I struggle with God and religion, I look at examples like that, and it don't make sense to me. And I don't pretend to have the answers. I would like to have the answers. And even when people try to give me the answers, I, I, I hear it. I try to digest it. Sometimes I go, eh, that might make sense to me. Or other times I go, still not convinced. But I have the right to not be convinced. I got a question for you. Since we're trying to figure this out, sucker. Let, let's call a let, let's write into a comedy podcast. I hate that. To, I'm sorry, but I hate that. Yeah. You, you you chose Satan. Don't run to God now. There's so many examples when people pray to God and then prayers don't get answered and they get sick and their children die anyway, get raped and killed anyway. So so me, they but they, they, they it's because they believe in Satan. Are you that naive? So to me. He, he can be saying that the system is set up to be worshiping Satan over the God. I, I understand some of the things he's trying to say, but I don't. I don't get. It. Let, let let let's go. Let's go back to God though for a second though, because I, and listen. I think what we both have tried to say on this podcast is I'm not. I'm not. I'm not telling you who I am. I'm just giving you other thoughts. I'm not telling you my personal like I believe in God or I don't believe in God. You're dealing with yours in your way. But we're not saying to anyone on who listens, God and no God. That's not that's not our that's not our issue. We just bring up the questions. My question is this: uh, We were just talking about an, an un, We were talking about James Bond, <laughs> James Brown, Brown. Brown, James Bond. He would have been a good James Bond, though. Bye, James Bond. <laughs> Shaking that stone. <laughs> uh, but if you, if uh, we, we, we just did the James Brown documentary, but the question, one of the things we said is the, uh, the penalties, going to the unjust penalties that are given out uh, legally. I, I just have a question. If you, if you are, when you're talking about unjust, and I know he's doing devil and, ju and God and good and bad and light and dark, but basically, like, and you brought up children, when a child dies or gets cancer for no reason, 
He hasn't had time to be be committed to sin, uh, anything. How do you justify it? I'm asking him. How do you justify that? Because we talk about uh, as as individuals, we can we can look at something and go, hey, tw- ten years for that? Right. That, that seems unjust. Right. What's what's the sentence on a child? Mm. Cancer for you're born and in three you find out you have cancer. You're born to die literally, in and out. I'm I'm not I'm and listen man. This is why this is the kind of discussion that we're having. And yes, you can go light and dark, and maybe it's a test for the parents, but the kids going through it too. Uh, if if you uh, a, a storm, an earthquake that that kills hundreds of people. Incidentally, keep your thought, please. There's an email in here for you, where someone is saying the exact thing that I'm saying, and they're angry with you because they're going, Andy, trying to justify. Him doing 22 years as a way is ridiculous. So that guy has the right to feel that way. Yeah, but I never justified that he had the right. I'm asking what happens if he didn't have, if that didn't happen. It's a what if, not a justification. I, 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 it's like that that story where it goes the the guy get the the kid gets a horse and you go oh a horse that's great oh well then he was riding the horse and he fell off the horse and broke his arm oh that's terrible. And he goes, no, because then the, the armies came in and uh, they needed all the, all, they, they were taking all the men who could fight. But since the kid broke his arm on the horse, he didn't have to go to war. So, I mean, it's every step leads to something else is what I was trying to convey into the 22. I, I can't wait to get to that. Let me let me get to that, because that's a simpleton thought process that he just tried to use on me. But go ahead. Let's let's just stick with this, this simpleton. <laughs> all right. Um. God refuses to assist Satan to rule as God in his corruption. This is really idiotic when you take a second to literally look at it. Satan thinks he can be a better ruler than God, and God will help Satan achieve that. Uh, so we are all slaves of Satan's corruption. We're all prey to the slithering serpent predator. As Morpheus said to Neo in the Matrix, we are all in prison that we can't see or touch, reduced to batteries that work unto death. Of course, once you wake the freak up, then you'll see very clearly how enslaved you really are. So expect all sorts of abuse, such as innocent being locked up for 22 years. The reason why Satan hasn't designed his corrupt world to be unbearably evil is because, one, he is at the mercy of God who will not allow that. For a reason I will explain later below. And two, similar to Bane's Hell on Earth prison to Batman, the Dark Knight Rises. He's trying to poison our souls with false hope like shipwrecked men who have no water to drink except for the salt water that we've that we're seduced to turn to thus ignite self-sabotage satan's surgical method of torture it can cause suicide to escape the torturous prison um okay uh, so one sought one ought to truly uh, count their blessings when god does merciful mercifully intervene so one ought to truly count their blessings when God does. So what about when he doesn't? Why are they unlucky? And if God is so powerful as you say he is, wouldn't he have the power to make sure everybody's taken care of? Why some and not others? Santa Claus seems to deliver gifts for every soul all in one night, but God can't do what he needs to do. And some would say God is just as fictitious as Santa Claus. Um, God knew all this would happen from the jump. So God's goal has always been to rectify what happened. Let's say a ghostwriter for a comedian is a bread tin and the comedian is the baker and the jokes are the dough that gets baked and sells to customers to earn bread slash dollar. But someone beats the ghostwriter upside the head, giving him brain damage. So now he can't formulate creative recipes slash jokes for the baker slash comedian to perform. So now the bread tin has a dent in it. Every dough joke that is baked in it comes with a dent of imperfection slash whackness. So the comedian needs a ghostwriter, a bread of tin of equal value to the original ghostwriter so he can perform the jokes without any flaws in the jokes, a perfect bread tin. Adam is the bread tin that God flawed. Jesus is the new flawless bread tin. Jesus' mission was to prove that flawless humans do not struggle against Satan's corruption. All of us alive today are breads baked with flaws in us from Adam's flawed bread tin. So none of us can possibly take on that mission. 
just proved it. Even through torture, that perfect humans without struggle do not compromise their righteousness to sin. So since Jesus died proving that, he saved humanity because in due time, God will reform his followers and Jesus bred tin to perfect us all. This is almost done. Uh, bear with me, folks. It's almost done. <clears throat> now I explain all that to say God needed a line of faithful followers through the generation so that Jesus could be born into a chosen, faithful nation who once, who once were the Isra Israelites. Yes, the Israelites are also imperfect sinners, so they sinned and were punished accordingly. But God will mainly protect his chosen nation, his chosen religious followers, not surrounding sinful nations who worship false pagan gods. Capiche, Capiche, I think you said Capiche, Aries. Uh, now, uh, the Jews lost their privilege of being God's chosen nation, so God welcomed people from Gentile nations, anyone around the world who follows him in truth, to become Jews in spirit. These are his new Jew. These he will more protect from Satan's corruption. He does have a watchful eye on everyone, though. He may act to protect everyone accordingly in courtesy of his mercy, or he has some bigger purpose for that person whom he chooses to protect. But generally, God pick up our torture stakes and follow Jesus and expect Satan to do to us as he has done to Jesus. Literally and metaphorically, take Job as an example. God says that those who endures to the end will be rewarded with eternal life, which offers true wealth, true peace, true equality, and true justice, to which we don't know that other than what you have read. So to conclude in the words of the mighty T.K. Kirkland, make your pain be champagne. Find joy in a painful world as an atheist until doomed to external existence. How do you know that, sir? Or find joy in the painful life of an atheist until blessed with eternal life. Make your pain be champagne. George Carlin was a loud, proud atheist, as is Bill Maher. And George Carlin lived a long life and a successful life. Bill Maher is a millionaire. Beautiful home, cars, money. But yet the people who believed in God go to church during Hurricane Katrina were displaced, lives flipped upside down, and some died heinously. And they believed. They went to church. They gave their 10%. And their lives were ripped apart. Meanwhile, Bill Maher is a loud, proud atheist who is rich, successful, and at peace. Make it make sense. But this is the life that Bill Maher gets. This is it. And after this ends, Bill believes it's over. He's saying that the life, you can take that life, you can choose that, you can be successful and live in this life, or you can live a spiritual life in Jesus. How does he know this? He doesn't, but he, that's the choice that people make. Live a spiritual life within Jesus, and then when you pass, you, are, uh, you, you have a life outside of this for eternity. My question is a couple different things is, God knows all. Yes. Why did God need to do another book? He knew it was going to happen. Why did he have to have his? Why did he have to have his one, his only begotten son, come to the earth so that we uh, could be uh, absolved of our, our our sin? So that we, so that even though we're born with sin, that we would be allowed to. Uh, I, I, it's it, there's more questions than answers, and this is why when someone tries to explain something on a podcast with two comedians, I wonder like like seriously, your I, I appreciate it, but to do it in fire and brimstone like we wanted from a preacher on the show. But to do it in an email to a show with two comedians, you think that there's a and given what you gave, I, I can't go with you. What, what, what are you trying? What is your goal to accomplish? Are you here to save Aries? I don't understand what, what you're trying to accomplish with, with a, this long letter where you felt like the need to explain something that you didn't explain any that, that you don't have any room for conversation so I can't tell you cuz we're not we're not in, in 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 front of each other that's why with with the preacher it was going to be in front of each other there would have been a back and forth you just gave a lot of opinions as you said what's your resume yeah preacher has a resume well, and even then you can question some of that but at least you got a resume what, what where are you coming from what what's the purpose let us know that send send, send something so we can understand what the meaning of this was other than your opinion and again my guy, if you want me to listen to you, talk to me. Don't insult me. Respect begets respect. How you came at me and you want me to take you seriously? You might as well be an Israelite dressed up and being loud on the corner with a bad speaker system. 
Not all the Israelites do that, man. I, I know, I but I'm just saying. You want my attention? Dude, t- t- tone down the volume on the costume and get a good speaker system. <laughs> We got shit in the motherfucker in the motherfucker piece of shit in the white man in the hills in the peg in the beach in the motherfucker. That's how you sound. I can't take you seriously. All right, let me get my call me your f-ing hero, but then you call me a blonde bimbo. B-ing. Your thought process. You call the, <laughs> the way you handled it. You yeah. know, you 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 he, said he you, you said you said that us comedians are so sensitive. Hey, Amen. Clearly, so are you. Because if I got him, if, if, if you're saying that I and D.L. Hewley and Godfrey and all of us comedians get into our feelings and do that, well, what did you just do? Because for you to use such adjectives to describe me, I got in your feelings. You got in your feelings. I, 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 do, I do have to side with him on the one thing when he said comedians get into their I do think it's funny that a comedian can get on stage and say anything that they want about anything. They do, and we have the right to do well, that. That's the platform. Yeah, but if someone says something about us as a person, we, we tend to lose it sometimes. Well, no, no. I, listen, I don't have any problem with you attacking me joke for joke because as a comedian, I appreciate a good joke. I told you when that said to me on Twitter, Aries, you built like fat five tugging. That was funny. When I told it to Shaq, he died. So I don't mind that. But when you start attacking who I am as a person, okay. now we got a different thing. Okay. Some, yeah, yeah, you're right. And that's where it comes when it becomes because when it becomes personal. You're right. Yeah, he made it personal. And don't call me your hero. And don't, don't shake my hand, but at the same time you're shaking it, hock to you in my face. Okay. Now, to the opposite of that, uh, Devin Johnson. He's coming for me. For, no, no, no. Actually, this is in your favor. Oh. Uh, Andy agreement, thank God. Uh, hey, Aries and Andy, I watched the episode about the guy that got out of jail after 22 years. I agree with Andy. Maybe he would have gotten to a car accident and been paralyzed, but this is way out in a spiritual way. I usually agree with Aries instead, but not when he is against God. Say why would God allow this so I agree with Andy. In a way, Aries, think of it like this. What if God never did anything and never made the earth? You would be crying to be in jail or in a wheelchair eating your favorite food rather than being in darkness. But if I'm in darkness and don't know that anything exists, what would I miss? Mm-hmm. How could I appreciate what I don't know? You can't. Uh, I'm happy for him to be free and we shouldn't blame God for bad and ignore the good because God could have never did anything. Yeah, uh, I don't, uh, you know. You know, I, I don't know how... And, and I just want to make sure that I did say that. I wasn't justifying a 22-year sentence. I think that that's how some people, like, when you said that, I think that's how some people are going to take it, that I'm right. just buying a 22-year sentence because something else could have happened and this was a better situation. No, I'm just saying that that is a situation. And if 22 years uh, was deemed necessary outside of the our legal system, right. that, that, uh, that a higher power was to say, if we don't do this, this will befall you or your family or your situation will change. Right. And that's what it took. I mean, as a man, as, as a human and you had kids and a family and they said to you, Hey, uh, 22 years you have to spend here. Uh, and your family is, has a life that continues to move on and prosper and be fine or, uh, no time, but your family is for the next 10 generations. Right. What are you going to take? Depending on who you are as a person, right. you're probably going to want your family to prosper. Uh, that that that's what the point of it was. I wasn't trying to say that it was justified, though. I'm just saying, uh, from a spiritual place, we don't know what our path is and what's going to happen. And I do believe in in in. in I, I believe that there is something besides me and my decisions that make the earth work um, for my in my family and myself. And I believe there is, I believe in a higher power. I, I don't always understand what that is. Listen, I've said a million times, deep, 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 deep. I'm be deep, deep, deep on the cover. I'm be so deep. You page me, be Axel and nobody. Um, I'm so deep down. I believe that too. I do. I just am on the fence at times because when certain shit happens, I scratch my head and I go, this just can't. This just doesn't make sense. But God wouldn't make it easy for you to believe either, though. 
I mean, I, I shouldn't say it wouldn't make it easy to believe. He would, he would, he would give you the rules, the instructions, and then that would be what it is. I, I, I do believe this. I think that the the devil, uh, the Satan, the spirit, the evil, whatever it is, right. that comes to you in beauty. Because it's you would, called pussy as a well, woman. Sometimes, because <laughs> no, because we would run from anything that scares us. Right. So. Yeah. In the idea of what a, a spirit or the uh, of a negative spirit of a Satan, it has to come to us in beauty. It has to entice us. It want. It has to make us want to get uh, to to do what to do seduce us into doing what we know isn't right for the beauty of what is in front of us. So that has to be that. It's not going to be anything ugly. Ugly is easy to run from. You're scared of ugly. You'll run from ugly. Ugly. You don't want to have anything to do with it. You got that right. <laughs> So it's got to be beautiful. It has to entice us. It has to want to seduce us. So it, it, when the devil comes from you, it's not going to come from a, 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 of a place of, 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 uh, of, of scariness. It's, it's going to, you're going to want it. And that, I, I, and I think that that's what he's, the other writer was trying to say. Hey, Joe, listen, man, if people don't believe what you believe, respect them for it. And if you don't like it, uh, put your head down, shut the f*** up and keep it moving, nigga. No, you you can you can also have a conversation. That wasn't a conversation. You just that uh, was judged. And you just came in with a. I'm not going to say a baseball bat, but you came in with a, like a nightstick. <laughs> <laughs> nightstick, baseball bat, a f- uh, pipe. It all hurts. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of debate that goes on with this. It's not something that you want to talk to two comedians over a, a long wordy. Uh, email and then with two comedians, you couldn't have started out worse by telling us what comedy should be. That that I was done. Come that. on, man. Come on, man. That's the beauty of it, man. That's the beauty of comedy. It comes in different styles. It's a buffet. Some people, especially if you're a family, you're not gonna go see uh, Eddie Griffin. When you, if you're a family, you're gonna go see Carrot Top and the props because it's G-rated. Or Brian Regan. You know, if you want clean, great comedy, if you if you if your mood is more dark and blue and raunchy, there's Monique, baby. There's there's different styles. There's storytellers. There's impressionists. There's the uh, uh, comedy. T- uh, uh, what do you call two people that do it at the same time? Do it. D- 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 I don't know. Two people to do it. I call them the Scalar Brothers. The Scalar Brothers. Yes, Scalar Brothers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's political comedians. Lewis Black, Bill Maher. So come on, man. And that's the beauty. How great is that? That you have options. I know a lot of people come to my shows because they go, this nigga's a dinosaur. He's the last breed. And I've read that. I've, I've read that. And, and, and comments on Instagram, my interviews with Vlad. Hey, man. This nigga's a, a, a throwback. Not too many comedians now don't give a f- and it's raw. They too concerned about wokeness and political correctness. And I'm proud of that. Corey Jenkins, Quiet on Set. What's up, guys? Corey in Vegas here. I just finished watching the documentary Quiet on Set about child actors and Nickelodeon and Disney and how some were abused. Since you both are fathers, would you allow your kids to be in the industry or are y'all just totally against it? Peace. I don't know, because I saw something on Instagram where Shirley Temple did an interview as a grown woman, and she basically said something about when she went into an audition, she was separated from her mother. Her mother went in one room, and she had to go in another. Now, I don't know what took place in that room. Uh, and I'm not going to sit here and be naive and say that it don't exist at all. But I don't think it exists to the level that it once did. The Harvey Weinsteins of the world, does some of that still go on today? Maybe, but not like it did. So, and, but to answer your question, uh, no, I wouldn't. You wouldn't let your, your daughter was doing music. Yeah, but I, it, 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 yeah. I mean, look, I, 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 not from the. I wouldn't drop my kid off and leave them there. Yeah, I would be in the room. I'd want to be in the room or pay someone that has to be in the room that I trusted a family right. member or something. I I just wouldn't drop them off and let them and let them just be there all day by themselves. Right. I, I think that you, you know, damn. I don't want to make it like this. <laughs> Listen, you you. There's people that I'm not going to say that everybody Nickelodeon 
it was a problem. But let me just put it this way, though. If you're if you're a person that likes that has a like for something is for kids. You're not going to go to the adult place to go find them. You're going to go where you where it's at. And if that's Nickelodeon, yeah, so that works for you. You like kids. Now you're around kids. Now you're getting comfortable. Now you're watching them. Their parents aren't coming to see them. They're there every day. All of a sudden you start calculating a plan. That's that's the problem. I don't think that there's a problem with someone being involved in the business, but if you don't have any supervision, if you aren't making sure that your kid's okay constantly, if you're not someone that the people that are looking for an opportunity don't think that you're going to be there, you're not showing up, that they think that they have a, a clear uh, path to, towards your kid, then your kid's in trouble. You need to be the deterrent. But listen, some of the abuse in terms of what eventually can happen to the kid starts at home. Yeah. Because a lot of these parents live vicariously through their kids. Yeah. And they see fame, fortune. If my kid get on a show, becomes the next Macaulay Culkin, my life could be better. And that might be the sadder statement. Yeah, that is true as well. But I, I see some of these things that have gone on. You know, when you said Shirley Temple and another, if someone said, hey, we want to see how they interact without you because uh, there's going to be times where we're doing a scene and I'm going to be given direction and I don't you want... You better put me in an SUV room, law and order room with the glass. I can see <laughs> I wanna, on the other side. Yeah, I, wanna see, <laughs> I, wanna, I, I wanna know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you're talking about, hey, we want to go talk to your kids, see how they handle five... If it's a couple minutes, maybe I'll understand it. But if it's, you know, they're in there for an hour... Right. I have a problem. Right. I'm not going to sit out there where my kid's in there with a bunch of adults and he's a five-year-old right. or, t- or even a 10, 12, 15-year-old. It's not going to happen. But right. it's also the kids, too, because there's a lot of stories about what the kids do to other kids yeah. in Hollywood. So I, I, it's, it's a very touchy thing. I didn't grow up in it, so I'm not really going to say anything minus from what I read and what I hear. <laughs> So I'm not going to go down that whole road. But if my kid wanted to and they understood that they were going to be super, there was supervision and they had to be around some stuff. Yeah, then I would I would be uh, I, w- I would consider it. But I, I I I can say emotionally, this isn't the best business for anyone. In listen, I, I, I love it's a great listen. Uh, Patrice O'Neill on Opie and Anthony talking about the business. Uh, and I think th- the conversation starts out about Tracy Morgan but then bleeds into Charlie Sheen. And when he describes the business as a monster, that people will line up in a big line to get chewed up and eaten and spit out by the beast and then get back in line because it's the only business where you can make a million dollars a week. Or even Jim Carrey's line from Why Did You Work So Much is because, you know, you're afraid to get off the bus because you don't know if there's another one coming. Right. So you'll stay there getting chewed up, beat up. And, and spit out and shit and out and, and get because, back because in you line. Don't, because you don't know if it's going to keep going. Right. So... I, you know, this is, uh, I, 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 I don't have, su- I don't have success at a, at a, at an old, yeah, at a, at a high level in this business. So I, I think that it's unjust for me to even answer any of it, but I can say emotionally, this isn't the best pers- business for people that not at all. Uh, it, 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 it can get you in your spirit. But I, again, I always say, here's the conundrum, man, when this shit works right, Andy, when it flows the way in your favor, there's nothing like it. You know, I, 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 I when, 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 when I first got on Mad TV, uh, we had to do a press junket in New York. And I'm already living in L.A. at the time. So this is my first time kind of returning home. So this, And they used to do this every year. I don't know if they still do it. But every year, all the networks would come to New York when they would announce all their shows New shows, repeat shows. And I mean, everybody flown first class. Everybody staying at the best hotels because you're representing the network. There's the meeting in front of the press, the banquet, the, the most exquisite, finest food. Then there's the after party that happens during the day from the, from the morning press thing to now it's time for lunch. At the after party at a New York City restaurant that's closed to the public. Only celebrities and people of the networks are there. And you're rubbing shoulders with, and at that time I was there, I'm rubbing shoulders with Luke Perry, 90210, fucking this person, that person, Melrose Place. And they're looking at you like you're their equal. 
because you are. You're on TV. You're in the same game as them. To somebody who's never experienced that, limos, every man, it's it's intoxicating. It's intoxicating. Dude, for me, it's way different because I'm I've never been at that level. But as far as like the the entertainment and art form part of it, last night was a big. It was a great night for me. I'll tell you why. Uh, we're in Virginia Beach, if you, just to let everybody know. And I think Virginia Beach has uh, good comedy. There's a, it's a lot. It's a military town, so I love military people because you really can't offend them. <laughs> they, 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 they know what life is, so it's not, it's not an offensive place. So you can kind of say things and go a little bit deeper. And I had the first show, and I thought the first show was great. It was a great show, and so I'm prepared for the second show. And it's raining now. People have been waiting in line a long time. They're trying to get in. And I'm just ready for a Friday night late show. Right. And I went on there, and my first two jokes. And I'm in the green room here in the last. And I went, oh, that's a good sign. Yeah, it was it was crazy. And it right. just kept growing and growing and growing. And when you talk about those moments, see, for me, that's I, I, I know I would love more. I'm not ever going <laughs> to deny I would love more. But for me, it's still about the art to me and, 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 and the entertainment and making people see. You know, when you're an odd person, and I'm an odd person. I, I openly admit I'm an odd person. And most comedians I'm so are, glad you said that because I can't wait to say what I'm about to say. But go ahead. But when you're an odd person, you have a different perspective than most people. That's what makes you odd. And when I can put out my lens to you and you start seeing things the way that I see them and you're laughing about what I just gave you, there's nothing that makes me feel better because now you see things the way that I saw them and you laughed at him and you saw what I saw. And so those moments and last night, and then I had that guy stand up and yell, see, I don't even know what he yelled, but he yelled at me because I, I hit a joke and a punchline and he couldn't believe it. And he, I, I very rarely get the black guy that stands up and does the, oh, that's the when you so know he, you don't get something. Yeah. And, right. and I hit that and I saw that dude do, and he, he's yelling at the stage and I started just I, in my heart. It made my heart that, that, that brokenness that you feel right. as an individual who's odd, yeah. who people don't understand why they think or why they say the things that they do. And you get a moment where you transferred all that oddness into one person that made them get up and stand up and right. shout at you. Those are the moments that have everything to do with comedy to me. And uh, they surpass everything else to me. And those are the moments. But how often are those moments? They're few. They're not yeah. like every second. And they're not also, sometimes you get them, but it's not about what you wanted it to be. This was a joke that hit. It was a personal joke. And it took it to another level. And I was like, that's, that's what you... That's when it feels good. That's what makes it worthwhile. That's what made me get on the plane. That's what made me want to be here. When you use that word odd, when we were in Cincinnati last week and we were flying back, my connection was in Chicago. And for whatever reason, this was the second time. Uh, oh, the first time was when we were in Albany and my connection was in Chicago. And I told a story about I'm flying back and Jason Collins is there, B.J. Armstrong. This is the second time I flew back with Anthony Jeselnik. So Anthony Jeselnik is sitting across from me. Across from him is David Kroll. You know who that yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, I know. Anchorman, all yeah, those yeah, movies. Yeah. So then we get to the airport, and in baggage claim is and, uh, Dave Kroll, Anthony Jeselnik, me, and then come walking towards me, Eric Griffin and Brian Callen. And I'm going, L.A. is the only place where you would see five comedians that have been in film and television. This doesn't happen in Iowa. And I remember when I was telling you when we were in Cincinnati, how that girl kept staring at me. Yeah. And you made, me, you made the point, dude, we're in Cincinnati. How often do you think they see a celebrity? So um, Eric and Brian, we, oh, what's up? We shake hands and shit. We start talking. And uh, Brian used the word something, something, and comedians, and da 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 and people don't understand us. Who, man, we're all misfits. Yeah. I love the word misfits. It, it, it described it per, uh, perfectly. Just misfits. That's perfect. Odd it, misfits. It's, yeah, it, it is. And when a misfit has gone through life and then right. they can share something that brings a whole community to go, got it. There's right. something about that that you can't replace. I mean, for me, that's how it works for me. That's why I don't sh I, my struggle isn't success or financial I get it in the moments when I have those moments where people I knew identified with what I just put out there and those moments and you know when you hit when you hit something that's so odd but you get a whole room to see your point yeah. there's no, there's jokes you can do and this is where comedians talk about things in, in what is real comedy what isn't comedy you can hit a room 
with jokes that you know will make them laugh. That's not the hard part. It's actually not that hard to be funny if you want if you if you want to go down an easy road, an easy road. And, and honestly, the business won't let you do that either. It does for some people. So let me be careful how I say this. But when you truthfully do something that only you have ever identified with and a whole room finally sees what you had to say, uh, it, it, it's vindication for a lifetime of people thinking that you were just the most f***ed up person in the world. Right. And, you know, back to Joe, until you experience that, stay the f*** out of our lane. Because that is a feeling that unless you do stand up, you don't know how incredible intoxicating that is and how validating that is to your thought process. I thought it, I felt it, I wrote it, I did it, I spoke it, and it worked. I, I knew, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I got a purpose. And you want to tell me I shouldn't pursue what I'm thinking, feeling because of your opinion? Dude, miss me, man. You know, the Jesselnick thing that you brought up, Some a comedian told me this about Jesselnick, um, and, 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 but meant it in a good way, but yeah. a truthful way. And I think this is some of Jesselnick's standoffishness, to be really honest. Jesselnick is a hell of a writer. He writes all these bits that get you to go one way, and then he goes the other way. And listen, I'm not going to disrespect uh, his talent, but he, to me, falls under that umbrella of Dimitri Martin, uh, What's my man named Stephen Wright? There's a deadpan There's some, to his yeah, delivery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not really my style. No, but but but, but again, that's the beauty of it. But and even even Stephen Wright, but Stephen Wright also genius writer, man. To, to, the way they write jokes and they do it in this de deadpan. And, and and but what I'm saying is these are jokes. They're made to elicit a, a response. When we do comedy, and as as more as you see more comics, you do comedy for what is in you. Based on some, a lot of times life experience, what you felt, things that you've gone through, things that have affected you. And when you deliver those personally, when it's part of your life, part of who, the fabric of who you are, and you deliver something heinous, that, and this is where this, this whatever his name is, isn't going to get. You deliver something heinous that he called shocking, but you deliver something heinous that happened and you turn it around and make it funny and all those people laugh. You know what happened? They laughed at what was bothering you. They laughed at your pain. You brought them into your pain, and you right. made it funny. You know what that does? It makes it funny not for only for them. It makes it funny for you. Listen, I, I, you know, I, I think Lisa Lampanelli was the queen of shock value. I never really necessarily thought her jokes were funny. Those are jokes. I just thought it was shocking. But you know what? Who am I to say she doesn't have the right to do that? That's her style. But this comic said that kind of style, just for next style, is about... Great writing. You're great at what you do. You're great at what you do. There's nothing denying that. But to be personal and to let someone leave with something personal is a difference between telling jokes and being an, a, an awesome entertainer and being a comedian. Richard Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby. Do people laugh at what you say when you say it? Did you get paid? Tell Bill I said I have a coke in his mouth and yeah. shut the fuck up. The bottom line is you make him laugh. How you do it. Don't matter. It doesn't matter, but it is nice when you leave something. You, you brought up Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, when he's talking about eating the ham, the, the 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 white bread hamburger. I want McDonald hamburger. It, it's a true story, though, about a difference right. between someone who has a little bit more money and then you, right? And how they get to enjoy something that seems so minimal and your experience with the green. When he says with the, the, the green peppers, yeah, coming out of the. Yeah, all the grease running down your arm. Yeah, the experience, and he's a young man at this time. He's not <laughs> deep into who, what his experience is. He's giving you that that right. that that early young man experience, but you felt it. Right. You felt everything that he had to say. Yeah. You know who else is going to explain to you about the green pepper coming out of the f bread? Right. It's necessary to the experience. Jesselnick, and it's not jacking Jesselnick. He doesn't have the texture. In his jokes to give you the green pepper right. coming out of the that's bread. not his style. Though. That's not his style. But I'm saying that's the difference between being a great writer who's a great, uh, it's, it's a great joke teller, yeah. versus a comedian who gives you the texture of life yeah. and lets you laugh at life. Mm -hmm. It's actually laughing at life. But but just so I'm clear about what you're saying, one doesn't devalue the other. One does doesn't it? devalue the other. But I think there's there's I think that there should. I would like to think that there's a difference between someone who gives a joke and it's a f 
excellent, well-written joke. Stephen Wright, I, I, I was so dry. Some came home, I put my car key in the door key, in the door hole, and I turned the, the key, and the, the, my, my apartment started up. So I took it for a drive. When he first told that joke, funny. Now that does nothing for I me. I get it, but it was funny. Got the you. idea he brought Got you, you he brought you along <laughs> on it. But that's a joke. Right. No one took their no one took their uh, house. And, their, and listen, listen, some comics, they just they don't either want to or can't be that deep to leave you with thought like Dave Chappelle. Some of them just gonna hit you with jokes. And some audiences don't want to be opened right, up right. they don't want an emotional right, experience right and so those are jokes and you should appreciate jokes and great writers i'm not i'm not putting one over the other but then there's a comedian who paints a textural picture that gives you life experience that connects with you in your life and lets you see something that maybe you didn't see or something that was so painful to you that when i explain it through my lens and you laugh at it it helps you Remember what you went through and gets you lets you laugh at your own situation. That's to me, that's the art, that's the comedy that I enjoy, that I aspire for, and I look at it as a comedy. That's a comedian, someone who does that. A joke teller is still a comedian, but it's a different kind of com a comedian. It's a different it's not, it's not it's James Brown connecting with you on a guttural level versus just a pretty that's a beautiful voice. That right. I don't need a I don't need a great song I don't need a great story in the song I just that's a beautiful voice a beautiful song beautiful music, but you have someone not the most attractive person giving you not the best voice but connecting with you in a way that breaks you emotionally that's what I think comedy that's what I think a true that's the basis of what real comedy is. Today. Larry the Cable Guy ain't gonna make you think. No, but he's gonna make you laugh. Hey, that's the point. And that's what the point that's what you paid for to laugh. But if you get the other, I think that's the extra that you that's the extra butter on the popcorn. Right. Listen, Stephen Wright, Dimitri Martin, Charles Cozart, Mitch Hedgeberg, uh, you know, they all that's that's their style. That's you know, uh again, I'm I'm not gonna disrespect it because I'm in the game. So I respect different styles. Different styles make fights. So I'm, uh, I'm not. I want to make be clear. I'm not disrespecting it either. I'm just yeah. giving my perspective of what it is and what I like from my comedy. Yeah. Uh, Sean Lowe, uh, Bloodsport Homage. Uh, hello, Aries. My name is Sean David. Uh, I just an homage movie. I think you meant to say I just watched or made uh, uh, to Bloodsport and many other '80s martial arts films called The Last Kumite, starring Billy Blanks. <clears throat> Cynthia Rothrock, uh, Tong Po, kickboxer, Kurt McKinney, uh, lead of No Retreat, No Surrender. Music by Paul Herzog and Stan Bush. I think you made to say, I just made a homage movie. Oh, made. You meant to say made. Uh, but you you wrote, I just A-N. Um, any chance I can come on your show to talk about it? We tried to bring 80s films back, and it's coming out soon, also in the U.S. In Germany. In Germany, we hit number one on pre-sales last week. Bolo's son is also in the film. Uh, Bolo Young has a son, okay? Also, I think my old school NBA channel basketball time machine might be the biggest old school show YouTube explaining to the world why Jordan is number one. Looking forward to hearing from you. Regards from Germany, Sean David. Uh, Sean, I, I, I wish you the best of luck on uh, your your venture. Uh I don't know if he... Depends where he would be. And and I think that I would love to have him come on just to talk about Jordan. That too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, 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 what do we charge him? What do we charge him? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, where are you going to be? Let us know where you're going to be. Uh, if you're in a city that's near us, uh, maybe it's something we should entertain. Um, very good. But brick not hit back. Dim mock. Love blood sport, man. Mashidoshi. Um, Do we're, we're over an hour. I know. I just, I, you know what? I want to give him a, just an extra twenty minutes because we spent so much time. No, no, I don't. I think we'll, we'll be alright. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If, if it ends because we're running out of uh, battery on this, guys, just it's just gonna end. Yeah, it'll be a <laughs> Sopranos moment. <laughs> don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we we might go into Sopranos mode on you. 
Uh, Ali D, Roadhouse. Um, no spoilers, MJ LeBron. Uh, hi, a and just wanted to chime in with a movie you guys should see. It's the new Roadhouse movie with Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor. Have you not seen this? I haven't seen it. I didn't know it was out No, yet. I knew it was out, but my, my problem is, am I... Every time I see one of these remakes yeah. from my time period, uh oh, it's just not the same. It's not as good. No, because they're not as gritty. Because they can't do the same thing that we used to do. So, I so would... now that's why I'm curious about this. Because of course, Roadhouse was a classic. Yeah. So I uh, own that on DVD. But when you go and look at it, it's terrible. Now. Oh, it's terrible. No, I won't say terrible. No, it's terrible. It, 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 no, 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 no. The I won't end say terrible. scene when they kill him at the house. Listen. It's not cell block 99, which is terrible. It just doesn't live up to date. You forget. Back then, that was the shit. You forget how much cheese is in a movie until you rewatch it. It's a cheesy movie. Not at the time. At, not at the time, but when you go back. I'm talking yeah, about going back. Yeah. It's a cheesy as movie. But, but, but you're saying it like, oh, it's just, at that time, it was the no, at that time... You thought it was a little bit cheesy no, then? No, no, I'm just saying, at that time, that mustache could do no wrong. Which mustache? Sean Elliott? Yeah. Oh, man, come on, man. That mustache That's was... That's a the, man's mustache. I'm, I'm telling you, in that movie, you <laughs> believed that he was the baddest... <laughs> hey, man, when he came in and added to the fight, <laughs> I loved it. Dude, I, I mean, hate they stabbed him. Dude, it, it, there was no... Uh, Sean Elliott, I'm just saying... Let me tell you something. Sean Elliott will always have my respect from two movies, Roadhouse and Tombstone. Stone. Come on, man. I, 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 dude, that mustache. I'm telling you, if Birch Bridgewater was a person, it's Sean Elliott. I'm telling you, if that mustache rode in on any any movie whatsoever, you believed in what was about to Come happen. Come on, man. He was in uh, that, that, about... Uh, the guy's name was Rocky. The guy who had the uh, the elephant uh, elephant face thing. The elephant face. Oh man, with share and and it's not. You keep saying it, oh, it's Sam the Elliott. Man. By, oh, by you're way, right, Sam you're right. Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. Uh, it's Sam Elliott, and it's uh, and share, and then um, uh, Eric Stoltz plays the uh, oh the elephant man. It's not called the elephant. It's man. not called the elephant man. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Absolutely, that's it is. a different movie. Go, go on, go on, keep going. I'm uh, gonna look it up. Also, as far as LeBron versus Jordan goes, I don't care if LeBron had ten championships. I've never once seen MJ slump down and complain to the referees like a kid while his team is outnumbered and gets scored on. Well, you ain't been keeping up with what's been going on on the internet. I'm done with the '90s because that's all they're doing. Uh, I've seen LeBron do this more than once, and that's enough for me. LeBron and the likes of him have the skill, but they lack something just as important, and that's the Mamba mentality that players like Kobe and MJ had. The mentality that they would give everything they had, even if they were down 20, and there was 10 seconds left in the game, LeBron just doesn't have that. Take a look at Mike Tyson, for example. Yes, he's up in age, but Mike is willing to die in that ring while his opponents aren't. Uh, that's what makes him so dangerous. Hopefully, this gets read, and if not, then oh well, it's another email sent off into the abyss, LOL. Take care, dudes. Did you find it? Mask. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, the name is Mask. And it was kind of the same thing, two dudes with faces? No, no, it's just a, it's the guy who has like the elephant Titus thing. It's, it's... That's the elephant man and Mask. The no. elephant man was the man with the up face. Yeah, no, ma yo, Elephant Man is the the body. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's in the black and white film. That's that's Elephant Man. Mask was the one with Sam Elliott and okay. Cher and Eric Stoltz. And he's a young kid named Rocky that has this and he's he has issues. And Sam Elliott's right. a, a biker. And he has the mustache. Yeah, he has. A, yeah. yeah, man. Does he? Have you ever seen him without? Yeah, there was it? one movie he did without the mustache, and he's just like uh, who's Magnum PI, the, the guy. Tom Selleck. Those two should always oh, yeah. keep the mustache. Oh, yeah. They take it off, and it, it loses. It's, yeah. They're super. It's like it's like super Superman power. without a cape. Yeah, it, you got to have the mustache. Right. Uh, oh, your your boy returns, Chris Granja, Anti Zion Part Two. Oh, good. Sup, so first off, uh, you don't know what I know or don't, Andy. I stay studying political and historical shit over a hundred books in my library from all perspectives. But look, I stayed at my POV and it comes from 20 plus years of studying. Check the Havara, Havara, that's a Jewish thing? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, agreement and so on. But I'm not here to disrespect the show by bringing genocide and war crimes into it. I'll leave it at that, and I said my piece, and it doesn't come without studying history. By the way, 
I ain't opposed to bringing this topic to the show if you want to bring it, but I don't want to assume anything. This is too heavy for this show, unless it's not. And yes, Aries, I'll hook you up with funds, but not Zionist ever. Yeah, that's fine. I, I didn't ask for your money. I didn't ask for anything from you. And, and I said, I didn't even knock you. I didn't say anything about you. I, I didn't. I just said that I don't know. I don't know what you know, number one. Yes, there's a lot of agreements. I, I'm not disagreeing with it. I said this is a long history. This isn't an easy one. But you also said genocide. So me and you are done. Why did genocide make you done? Because he, just- he wants to use this definition of genocide. and It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist to what he's saying. If there's two million Arabs living in Israel as it state as it sits right now, when the numbers of Isra- of Jews have disappeared through the Middle East, except for a very few small amounts of people that still live in the Middle East, uh, and the numbers of of Arabs have gone up in Israel, where's the? Tell me where Israel is the genocidal place. It isn't, I, and I don't want to do this because it's not the right podcast for it. Maybe we should do a podcast. No, I I think the right thing to do for the podcast, because I would actually like to see it, is have you and him go at it. We're going to have to meet up, but... Or maybe do... Okay, I can... See, it's a problem, because you can't do it Maybe we could do it like we did with Tim with the phone call. Maybe, but I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know if that works. And then we have to have someone that, just to be fair... Like someone moderator? Yeah, because someone has to go over all the things that we say, because some of these things are not true. Some of the things that uh, the, the Jewish side, the Zionist side have put out are not, are, I feel, are a little overly simplified interpretations, and they don't give enough to the Arab side. Would it be a funny visual if you're sitting here, I'm sitting here, and in the back of us in the middle is a Jew with the curls and the black hat <laughs> and the whole outfit, and he just sits just in them. silence, and just when he, when he leans forward, it's to give a fact. The, a lot of those guys are against this, too. Oh really? Yeah, uh, but uh, but then a lot of the Arab side misquotes and misstates other things that are against the Jewish side. I think they both do it. I, I without a doubt, I know they both do it. So both sides. I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about sides. Uh, it happens all the time. So yeah, you would need someone who fact check both of us as we as we spoke about it. And I'm not saying that he doesn't have, like. If you do study, and you could there is ample uh, things to look at and go. What about this? And then I could say, what about this? And then we go back and forth to what about this? It's, it's complicated. It, it, and, and when this first started to happen, everybody came out with these videos. It's not complicated. It's very complicated because this goes back thousands of years. And if you only want to make it go back 70, 75 years, it's still complicated. So whatever. I, I didn't ask for anything from you. Keep your keep all your stuff. Give it to me. As, 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 as you believe as a Zionist. Give it to me, nigga. I, I shouldn't say this uh, this way because you said not to take anything that you said. I don't know about you, and I don't. So I'll say it this way. Uh, as, as most people perceive, uh, I'm a Zionist. I must have uh, unlimited funds because uh, He don't. <laughs> <laughs> he don't. <laughs> all right, nations. Long-time listener, second-time emailer. Steve, do what you do when you does when you do it. What up, ANA Twins? It's your boy Jacob from upstate New York. Long time listener since episode zero and second time emailer. First one wasn't read, and understandably why, because it was long as <laughs> one uh on some Dewan curse type shit, LOL. Uh the dude with the scrolls. We know who he is. He 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 he. Um, is that how you spell it? Uh my bad. I'll try to keep this one a bit shorter. I'll keep it 100 honest with you guys. The year a few months, the year and few months it took me to catch up with the good with the pod has been a roller coaster in a good way. That's what I'm talking about. Um, some things I agree with you guys, some others I don't. I'm only 22 years old, so I guess you can kind of say I'm ignorant when it comes to politics and police and out of that nature. However, I do understand why it's important to talk about, especially in today's world. I'll be sure to write in some more in the future. Just a quick question before I go. You telling me this, Andy, has only read one email out of almost 600 episodes. Andy, man the f*** up, lock the f*** in, and read more emails with your Jew ass. All jokes. Love you guys. Peace, Jacob, a.k.a. Nations. I'll be honest. I didn't even want to do the email podcast. This is Aries. <laughs> 
so uh, Aries always, this was kind of like your thing, though. Well, I mean, it didn't necessarily look to be my thing. Uh, but you liked it. You liked the emails. You liked the people writing in. And yeah. I'm looking for an email from someone right now. And they sent you an email, too. They copied you on this email. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm now I'm trying to find it because I, I saved it just so that I could read this email because, uh, yeah, so let's see, things. See, this is why I don't do emails, man. Because it takes you forever to find, find it. Find it, yeah. Because uh, you don't have a system like I do. Yeah, see, that's why you do what you do because you have a system. I don't have a system. I, listen, I come to practice and watch game tape. Andy just shows up on game day. Practice. And, and plays. <laughs> practice? We're talking about practice. Not a game. Practice. Practice. Uh, this is from the guy. You found it? No. I can't. I saved it. Just so. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I put it over here. Nope. Let me see if it's here. Maybe here. Nope. But I'm going to get to this guy yeah, eventually. Well, let me move. You go. I'm going to see if I can find it. In Nick here. Puente. If Duty Booty was a movie. What you think he's talking about? Duty Booty. If Turks. Duty Booty was a movie. They're saying if Duty Booty was a movie, it would be what? Jesus, Andy, Cell Block ninety nine. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm looking for the, this thing here. I'm not. See, even, that's why I be wanting you to pay attention. Yeah, well, I was paying attention, but it didn't make any sense at, at it this made particular moment. Perfect sense. It did, but I'm in a different mode. Uh, what's up, guys? I hope all is well. Uh, to the point of this email, I watched Brawl on Cell Block ninety nine, and that movie was completely <laughs> smelly, unwiped ass. <laughs> I listened to the episode, White Dolomite. I feel you were accurate in your assessment of the film. I also feel this movie was so bad, if Duty Booty was a movie, that would be the movie. Vince Vaughn looked like a cancer patient with a cross on his head, and I can't unsee that. My lazy eye was almost offended by how horrible this movie was. Whoever recommended this movie, Leroy Furious. Um, To you and the listeners needs to have their man card revoked and burned. You know, Leroy's been with us for so long, I wouldn't want to burn it. I believe it should be taken for a certain amount of time, but then given back. Everybody's allowed to make a mistake. Um, To the gentlewoman who did recommend this movie, I didn't know it was possible to suck at watching movies, and you pulled it (laughs) off. (laughs) We will never get our time back for this, and you are to blame zero out of ten. I don't recommend. Nick. Uh, the less you fear, the more power you will have, and the more you fully will live. Curtis Jackson. I love it. Uh, you know what? You know what your problem is. You you just don't watch movies good. <laughs> yeah, you suck at watching movies. There's an art to that. Aren't they called critics though? Yeah, but so now here here's my woman thing. All women are critics though. That's funny. <laughs> uh, Derek Thomas, Cell Block ninety nine. Hey, a and a, a big fan of the pod. I saw the movie Brawl in Cell Block 99, and that shit was garbage. Uh, that looked like something that would be on Tubi. Tubi gets a lot of flack for horrible movies. I've never watched anything on Tubi. Have you? Yeah, I don't mind Tubi. Uh, it, it's, it's a place to get free movies. Uh, you have to watch some commercials. That, but you still get to pick the movie. It isn't like it too becomes on and goes. But every clip I've ever seen on Instagram is of bad black movies. Well, they have a lot of bad movies on. But if you choose to watch it, that's on you, isn't it? Not on Tubi's fault. Tubi just has it available. Right. You're, you're, you're picking the movie. What if there was a network that was really purposely dedicated to bad movies? It's just called Shit Movie. And it's just, you, you turn it on. That's the app? Yeah, Shit Movie, and you turn it on. You don't get to choose. It just fires a movie at right, your phone. Right, And you have to watch it. That would be awesome, dude. I think people would watch it, though. Um, the only thing I liked about this movie was that the Vince Vaughnisms, which they didn't have any. They did. but It, they, was, so, it was so not Vince Vaughn. I thought it was, I still think the movie is just a cheese bag. If you want to watch them, like that cheesy, I don't know, campy, over the top, silly movie, I think it fits. It fits. Mm. It fits. I I just want to know where, (laughs) I want to meet the guy that tears up his car. His wife cheats on him, and he destroys his car, and then has kids with his wife. With his wife, the one who cheated. Yeah, the one who cheated on him. Right. Yeah, I'm going to beat the shit out of my car, and I'm going to go. My girl, and I, I'm gonna have kids. I, I just want to see the motherfucker who know how to tear the hood of a car off a car. That's how. That's how passionate he was about it. That's how much he loved her. He loved her so much. 
hair. He loved her so much that he was able to rip the hood of the car off. And then after he ripped that off, it was like it ripped the pain that he had out of his soul. And, and he then punched to- the headlights and cut his hand up and bust the window and do all that. Sat there bleeding and said, I love you. One was the scene where the black chick said she can make Vince ball smile. And he replied, no thanks. They don't want to show their braces. Two was the scene where the black prison guard who got his arm broken by Vince put the flash the flashlight in Vince's face and said, pretend you're talking to God. Which Vince replied, okay, but he doesn't smell like nachos. <laughs> that one's kind of funny, though. <laughs> the movie had some heavy hitters in it and seemed like it was a money grab. Anyway, that's all I got. Love, peace, and chicken McNuggets. Uh, DTPS. Uh, hey, Aries, what's up with the Dr. Dre thing? I'm sure he would be a great asset to the project. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to keep that under wraps, yo. I'm learning to just shut the f- up when it comes to certain things. Uh, you're still looking for this email. I'm still looking for it. It pisses me off because I, I saved it somewhere. Why don't you, uh, that'll be the first email we, we do next week. I found it. You found it? It's from Richard J. Yep. I'm going to let you read it. Uh, okay. Now I get to take a break. It says, Mr. Steinberg. He sent it to me, and then he sent, then he copied it and sent it to you with another explanation. And so you I have it somewhere. I but I, I, I have the original. Uh, Mr. Steinberg, I hope this email reaches you in good health. I have been a VIP member of the Spears and Steinberg podcast since November 2023. Yeah, and when he says that, he means the Patreon guy, uh, a, a Patreon subscriber. As we live, as we live over 4,000 miles away from each other, I had uh, reconciled with myself before my subscription commenced that some of the VIP benefits wouldn't really benefit neither you nor I. Any uh, live Q&A would be ridiculous uh, early, later for either party. And unless you tour, and I can't say this, but it's in Wales, in an English tongue, I can't say that. Can you say that? It's C-Y-M-R-U. Simru. Simru? Is that how you would say it? Wales, in the English in the English tongue, the old Anglo-Saxon. Oh, for slave. That's old uh, Anglo-Saxon for slave. Again, I resign myself not uh, uh, benefiting from any tour exclusives. I joined the VIP solely to show my support. <laughs> St- show my, see, this is why I don't do it, to show my support for the podcast. If a VIP shout out uh, is to be made on any of the apps, up, uh, podcast uploads in the future, then to me it would be just as a bonus. I want, to resol- uh, I want you resolute in the knowledge that one doesn't expect anything. The reason for my email, I have just received a message from our administrator of the Patreon page advising me that our VIP level will shortly be discontinued. The reasons for the discontinued were stated as failure to maintain benefits for the VIP <coughs> tour uh, provisions. Uh, we were going to do a lot of stuff, and honestly, guys, we we just haven't done it, so we we wanted to take that tier away so that I'm, this isn't in his thing. I'm just explaining. We took that tier away so no one would feel like they were being uh, 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 ripped off. Um, the reasons for the discontin- uh, discontinue were stated as failure to maintain benefits for the VIP tour. A request was also made to reduce the contribution uh, to five dollars. Rest assured, I will continue to describe at the new rate of five dollars. Finally, the email referred uh, me to a contact you directly in order uh, to inquire about goodies that can be thrown my way. Uh, one hastened uh, to add that the mere thought of you throwing something four thousand miles away would be worth the twenty-five and. Uh, Genius uh, Against World's Record Award. Hopefully this message has brought some level of cheer to the usual drivel of the mundane uh, of administrative duties. Uh, If not, English will beat. If not, the English will beat me raw. Below, I have attached a screenshot of the message I have received. I leave you in good faith that your daily is as prosperous as it is uh, perverted, rich, and sticky. Yours, yours sincerely, Richard J. Uh, where's my T-shirt? Um, so, uh, people, I want to know who reads better, me or Andy. Oh, if you have to even uh, no, I was gonna say based off of that, I think you read better than me. No, not at all. Uh, but what I was gonna say is, at, at what Richard and I really appreciate him sending me this, uh, Richard J. There's your shout out. I said I was gonna get this, and I and I just had it, and now it is there. Uh, what happened is, is that we. Uh, when we first started everything, they have you do everything at one time, and we had these elaborate 
uh, ideas that we were going to do this and we're going to do all these things and we're going to start the Patreon. We're going to do this. And so we had some subscribers at the full amount and it's just, we were, we weren't able, we, we, it's me and Aries. It's Aries and I, and I, we don't, I, we don't always have time to do all these little things for the amount of subscribers that we had on Patreon. So we got rid of it because, uh, we wanted to be fair to everybody and we want more people to join at the $5 rate on our Patreon so they can get these unedited versions. And, uh, that, that was the goal, and that's what we did because we didn't want anybody to feel like they're being taken advantage of. And so I really appreciated that he said he was doing it. And this is what is nice when people do this. They were subscribing because they appreciated the content that we put out every week uh, and not ask for a monetary amount on based on uh, a monthly subscription. Uh, this was nice that some people felt like they enjoyed it and it was worth it to them so that they would pay this, and we appreciated that. Um and so, honestly, for all the people out there who were on that program, I really thank you. Uh, but we reduced it because of this. And, you know, eventually as things come around, you will find that if you were somebody from the old times uh, and had uh, previously been involved, we will take care of you. It's just going to be something in the future as we get more people involved in what we're doing. All right. Last one. Um, nice and short. Uh, bah, bah, bah. And I thought, I, you know what? Now that I remember, I sent that to you. What? That email. You did? I forwarded it to you, well, to the, you and Anthony. Okay, well, this one, oh, okay, but this one, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Damn, I sent you game tape and you, all right. Email episode. What's up, Aries and Andy? Been a while since I wrote in. OMG, Aries, I was watching the most recent Transformer movie, and that same movie cliche was set again towards the end of the movie. Uh, I forgot who got an upgrade, but the main character was like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you, man, I swear to God, that is such an overly... You know, I never watched the movie, and I saw it this past... Uh, matter of fact, the other night. I never watched the movie that Ice Cube did, Triple X, where he kind of took over yeah. for Vindy. Yeah, yeah, And there's a scene where uh, he gets in a tank along with Exhibit. And here's another cliche uh, line that they always seem to give the black guys... Whenever they're in a fast car or a car that causes a lot of destruction or they're doing anything that causes a mass amount of destruction, here's the line. I could get used to this. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Is there not another line to say? Anyways, you guys should check out Shogun on Hulu. Very good. And I'll be at your show April 5th. Can't wait to see you guys again. I'm out. Um. Yeah, man. I see. That seems to be the the go to black line. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, but is, there's no other lines because it, I mean we we did. That. That's how unoriginal Hollywood is. Hey, they just it, it's the writers though, and then that's it, lazy. The, it's the writers, and then they get into the production, and then the director goes, "No, that's not what he would say. He would say." Yeah, there's, you know, they talk about uh, 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 black actors have talked about this that they get into the room, right? And the producers or the people, the the, the execs will say, no, 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 that doesn't sound right. Uh, can you make it blacker? What would you say? <laughs> <laughs> so, you might as well say that. Oh man. Well, you know, it's just, we're all speaking English, man. <sighs> Not all of us, but I mean, right. the majority. I thought he was going to say one of the robots said it. Optimus Prime. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I could get used to this. Yeah. That's kind of funny. Uh, is that a show? I think that's a show. Then let me give out some dates real fast because I know these podcasts are yeah, I would, you know, I, I, I would love to see uh, that. I mean, we're, we, we've gone everywhere else with the Transformers. And, and you know, they make one of the trans. Here's the insulting part. I forget which one it was. I think it was the second one with Shia LaBeouf. They make one of the Transformers black because you know how the way he talks. Yeah, 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 yeah. He could, you could tell he's black. Go all the way with it. Optimus Prime. Get in the truck. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You know what would be funny? You know how um, Bumblebee... It's my job to protect Earth. I'm out. You know how Bumblebee always uses the radio yeah, things. Yeah, it's all Richard Pryor and uh, other black That's, comics. That would be. That would be. Yes. So they just use their voice yes. to get yes him to say what he needs to say. <laughs> baby, 
baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, guys, we're going to be uh, at uh, March 29th through the 31st with the Funny Bone in Columbus, Ohio. April 5th, Aries is going to be at the Parker in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Andy will not be there. Nope, I won't. One night only. Aries is out. Uh, April 11th, uh, Aries will be. Aries and I will be on our Canadian tour. At the uh, it's Aries Canadian tour, but I'll be there too. River Cree in uh, Enoch, Alberta. April 12th at Great Eagle in Calgary. Uh, April 13th through the 14th, we're back in the States at Funny Bone in Syracuse. April 15th, we're at Darth Music in Toronto. April 19th, we come back to the States. Cleveland, Aries, do you need anything? That's April 19th and 21st. April 27th, Bronson Center in Ottawa. April 28th, the Olympia in Montreal. April 30th, Bella Rose in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And then we're off back to the States. Portland, Oregon, May 2nd through the 5th. We're at Helium, followed by a couple quick uh, one-hitters. Uh, May 9th, Meyer Theater in Green Bay. May 11th, the Wilbur in Boston. Finishing up May 18th at the Hulu Theater in New York City, City Madison Square Garden. Coming home, Aerie Spears, get your tickets now. When I go to Portland, I want to f- one of them dirty feet white women so hard that I shake the dirt off their feet. Dude, if you, uh, j- just, for, just for fun, just for, for you, so you can do this. Yeah. If you watch any b- movie, uh-huh. all, the, all their feet are dirty. All no. the white, almost all the white chicks' feet are what dirty. What pornos you watching? Because when, they get, when they're walking around set to do all their stuff, they're walking around naked and barefoot, and by the time they get in, Dude, their feet are I've dirty. I've never seen a Check. white woman in a b- with dirty feet. Never. Check it out. What pornos are you watching? You're not paying attention. I pay attention to the whole scene. Pay attention. Dude, if I see that, I'm going to die laughing. You'll see. Really? It. Yeah. Dirty feet. All right. We done? What are we calling this? Dirty feet. Dirty feet. <laughs> I was just going to say that. We can't say dirty feet, white women? No. Damn. It's just dirty feet. The white woman is just extra. Uh, all yeah. right, Joe. They're all kind of white on the bottom. The feet? Yeah. You t- But you just said they're dirty. Yep. All... Women's feet are kind of white on the bottom. No, nah, don't put that on my black women, dog. Dude, it's lighter color on the it bottom. It is, but it ain't white. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a beige hue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the time they're in a, their dirty feet off. Now nah, I ain't never seen no black woman with no dirty feet. Watch these. Get the <laughs> out of here. Enjoy these. Are you only watching for the research now. Mm. That's a show. Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer, Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Pine Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.